This is a 2023 Airstream Flying Cloud 27 FB with a surprise on the inside. So you're gonna have to wait around till we get to the inside to see that surprise. It's awesome, it's worth waiting for. Now let's jump into a review. My name's Chad Watson with Airstream of Greensboro. Let's do a walk around on the inside and then the outside. Let's go. Now I'm gonna start with the front of this Airstream and the 27 foot Airstream, even though it's a 27 FB model, and a lot of times we'll refer to it as 27 foot. It's actually 28 foot in length and your, your 27 model and your 28 models across the Airstream line are usually 28 foot. So there's something to kind of look out for. Now this one here, I'm gonna start with the front. You're gonna have two 30 pound bottles hidden behind this really nice aluminum cover. You can take this cover off, which you'll need to, to pull these bottles out and have them refilled. Below here, this is going to be where your battery box is. It can store up to two batteries there. There is some storage in the front where you could add a couple of batteries if you wanted to go kind of a, a longer stay and wanted more battery power. Um, most folks are going to go with the AMG battery uh, or lithium. You could put a lead acid battery there, but most don't put lead acid anymore. AMG batteries or AGM, excuse me, AGM batteries are maintenance free and the lithium batteries are maintenance free. And the lithium batteries you get uh, you know, somewhere around double the storage and usability of the lithium battery. Two will fit there. Now it has a solar package on this particular one and it is an MPPT solar charge controller that charges those batteries and there's an AC to DC converter that would also charge those. And when you're towing, the tow, your tow vehicle will charge those batteries. You do have a power ton jack there is a manual override under this cap here for the power ton jack. If you had an issue with that, you're, you do have the ability to raise this and lower it. You do have the Demco uh, hitch on the front here. Now with the Flying Cloud, you're going to have standard the front rock guards. So with the Flying Cloud and with Airstream in general, everything around the outside is all going to be aluminum. It's a stretched aluminum. But the part, the one part that is not aluminum is going to be these rock guards. They're stainless steel, a little bit stronger to resist the rock dents and so forth. You can open these. There's a piano hinge here, a couple of bolts. You take those bolts off. This will swing out and allow you to clean the inside, both the rock guard and the camper. These solar guards here will also open. They swing out that way. There's two screws here, quarter turn. These will swing out. Now, you do have a window that opens in the front. And to open that window, you have to first come outside and open the solar guard. There is a positive lock here, so you'll come outside, lock both sides, and then you can open this front window. Now these windows, especially when they're brand new from, uh, from Airstream, the window itself they, they have made and shipped in, the window frame, Airstream makes themselves handmade. Um, these have a really good seal. Now, this is a queen bed model and I'll show you the inside in a bit. What that means as far as the queen bed is you get a little bit less storage than you would on a twin bed model. As far as the storage up front that you're gonna get with the queen bed model, that is here. It is a good amount of storage across the front there. Uh, you could fit in some bins, but you can also store quite a bit of things outside. You wouldn't be able to get necessarily chairs out there. I know that's a big thing. Uh, folks like to be able to store their chairs outside. Um, there is space on the inside to do that. Under the dining table is a good spot for that. Uh, but there is good storage there. You do have on the front here a Zamp solar charge, a connection that allow you to hook up one, one of the uh, suitcase solar panels, plug it in right there. It's, it's wired in. And it'll just kind of connect right to the battery, start charging it. And then on the other side, you have an LP quick disconnect port. Now, as we move to the passenger side of the Airstream, I want to give you a couple, the Flying Cloud, I want to give you a couple of uh, details on it. So 20 foot in length, it measures nine foot, nine inches to the top of the air conditioner up there. Uh, your hitch weight for the 27 foot is 850 pounds. The 28 foot is slightly heavier. Uh, your base weight is 6,100 pounds. Your GVWR, so your gross vehicle weight, is going to be 7,600 pounds. Uh, your freshwater tank measures in 37 gallons. Your black tank measures in 40 gallons. And your gray tank measures in 36 gallons. Now, now looking at the passenger side 
of the Airstream. Of course, you're gonna have the door. This is a front bed, so the door will be on the back. If it's a rear bed, so RB, the door is gonna be on the front. With the Flying Clouds, you are gonna have the manual awning system. Now these, they look like they can be cumbersome, um, but the truth is, once you get used to this manual awning, you're gonna love it, and you're not gonna want anything different because there's no motors on it, there's no electronics, there's not really anything that can break as far as this particular awning goes. And since it has multiple points of contact, you can leave it out with a little bit of breeze. Now Airstream won't tell us uh, you know, how you know, much of a breeze it can stay out for because obviously they, they don't want to take the chance, but you can leave it out with a little bit of breeze. Uh, you can also bring it out to where it comes out just a, f a few feet. If you're camping uh, in a, car a caravan, there is a feature where you can bring it out about three foot or so and still have some awning between the two campers that are side by side. You're gonna see the bedroom area. This window opens here. This port window does not open. You do have a vent with the exhaust fan over the stove. It does vent outside. Now you do have to open that. So you do have a tankless wa hot water heater. Uh, not really a whole lot of maintenance with a tankless hot water heater and that's one of the benefits to it. Uh, your vent is right there. You do have two portholes here. These don't open, but it does give you a nice view out while you're doing dishes and so forth there. And then you do have the lock for the door that holds the door open. Now with Airstream, they do use the Dexter axles. Uh, the Dexter axles are considered as far as uh, trailer axles to be some of the best axles that you can put on a trailer. They are different. They don't use leaf, leaf springs like a lot of your other, your other travel trailer manufacturers will use Lippert as an example of that. This is gonna give you a better ride, a smoother ride for towing. Uh, it also lowers the center of gravity and there's less things below to mess up. There's no springs to get hit or to snap. Now the Airstreams do come with Goodyear Endurance tires. These are the American made. They're also considered the best tires in the RV industry uh, as far as durability and, uh, and, and well, not coming apart. And then moving to the step, you do have the aluminum step. This is another one, one of the parts of a Airstream, kind of like the similar to the awning, where it will take a little bit of time to get used to it. But once you get used to the step, you're gonna love it because it's solid. It is easy to use once you're used to using it. And one of the things I like is you don't necessarily have to deploy the bottom step in a situation where you may not need to. You can fold up the bottom step and then you still have it actually sits facing up. You still have a place to step in. And then when you're deploying that bottom step, it just folds out and uh, super easy to work with. You do have a step light right there. Switch for that is on the inside. Now moving around to the back, as I mentioned a second ago, LED lights uh, for your brake lights, as well as your marker lights up top. Uh, you have the flag clown emblem there. You do have your license plate there with the light, obviously. Now, as far as the back goes, you have the steel bumper. There is a little bit of what we call wet storage here. This storage is gonna be for things, uh, but that is a place where you can store some of those things. It does have a locking hinge here. To, open, to close this, you're just gonna pick up on that, let it drop, let this fold into place. There are little holes that these uh, latches go into. And then again, Airstream really likes to have positive, positive latches so it's not just, there's not slam latches on these. There's not the little goofy turn latches that you see on a lot of uh, lesser expensive travel trailers. You're gonna see really high quality latches, uh, positive latches that really latch into place. Um, so let me deploy this window awning so you can see how it works. Now on your back side, on the driver's side, there's actually a hook where this piece would hook to here. On this back window, there are two little uh, what you would call these anchors connected to a little a little receiver here there is rubber on the the back side of that to help keep uh, any scratches or anything from happening those go into place there then this guy right here will just fold up there's a piece of velcro there and then the other side of the velcro is just above uh, let's really get that all the way around and then it will attach there and you have your window awning deployed. Now, as I move around to the driver's side, I want to mention, you probably saw it in the video, there is a standard backup camera with the Airstream. Now, it's wireless as far as its connection to its monitor. 
it is powered. It's powered through your marker lights. And what that means is when you're in the truck, you do have to have your running, you know, your marker lights on. It doesn't have to, have, you don't have to go all the way to, to headlights, but you do have to have at least the marker lights on for your tow vehicle. That will power up that camera. Now it's wireless to the monitor that's in your truck. Now moving to the driver's side, this does have the window awning. Now as far as deploying this, on what should come with your camper is an awning uh, pole. It has a plastic cover on this side, a rubber cover on this side. The rubber cover on this side is just more for comfort. This small one here is gonna be the one that you wanna make sure you retain, you keep. So important thing, if that falls off, make sure you put it back on. Now with this awning, it does have a travel lock that's right here. It's the same travel lock that is on the other side, as on the main awning as well. So you're gonna put your awning tool in and just turn that. And then that, now that's, uh, now it's unlocked. As far as deploying this, you're just gonna either reach up with your hand and grab it there or use your awning pole, grab it right there and pull it out. And I'm just gonna use my hand because it's a little bit easier. Pull that down. And then there is a hook right there, a very nice metal hook that's attached there that you'll lock it in place. This strap stays deployed unlike the back one. That is your window awning. You have your furnace here, it's a Dometic furnace. You do have the new smart plug. So the smart plug does have this cap that's really nice. The cap will actually attach into the end of your power plug. Uh, the nice thing about that is it does help to keep uh, dust, dirt, those types of things from getting into the actual plugs there. Now with the smart plug, you do have roughly 20% more metal to metal contact. That's part of what makes this plug better. It's much easier to plug this in, but it's even easier to unplug it compared to your traditional RV plug that most of your non-airstream uh, RVs are coming with these days. The other thing I really like about the smart plug is on the top here, there's a light and that light will indicate whether it has a reverse polarity or if there's an issue with the, the power pole. So you plug your power in first there, look at that light there. If it's blue, if it's just lit and blue, it's good to go plug it in. Now this isn't a surge protector. You'll still wanna have a surge protector. Uh, beside that, you're gonna have your TV and satellite, so cable satellite ports here. They do give you both. Your city fill is, is right here. Your black tank fill is there. Behind this guy here is gonna be your portable water fill. You do have a hot and cold water shower outside here. Now it doesn't have a connection point up here to be able to you know shower underneath it. It does have a place here that you can hook to it. But of course it does have the water hose so you can pull that out and shower off. And then moving down, you're gonna see the final window for the, for the queen bed area. This window opens as well. And the window on the other side so you can get some really cr good cross ventilation. There is a fantastic fan up front so you can turn that on. That will also help pull in some breeze, some good air. And then you have that front window as I showed that also opens. To put this awning away, the window awning, you're just gonna pull this out. Now again, I'm tall enough that I can just let it roll, uh, rotate back in, into place. You do have that metal aluminum protector just like the back awning and then you're going to want to grab your awning pole which i have currently right here and you'll connect it to your lock travel lock and then rotate that into place and if sometimes it'll be tight if it's tight just use this arm here to move the awning in and out and you can get that a little bit loose to make that travel lock work a little bit better and then you can stow this back away inside your pantry or that rear bumper is also a great place to stow this away. Now I'm gonna to move to the inside of the flying cloud. Now I didn't talk about this before, but I'm gonna open the door here and show you the door. Uh, I talked about the latch there. Uh, and I moved kind of to handheld. Um, love this latch. One important thing is make sure you always remove your key. It will dent the side of your aluminum. Uh, now this here, it is a one hand operation grab there and then just use your thumb to push back on the latch and you can open that now as far as the the door itself um you may not know this but it takes roughly 300 hours to build an airstream versus your normal travel trailer which is going to be you know closer to 30 hours 40 hours something like that it takes eight hours alone to build the door itself um, and then your aluminum interior door does have four welds or eight welds excuse me four on each side it is an aluminum screen. There's a nice molded plastic 
with the Airstream logo there where it's built. And then this will open and it does latch into place there and there's a very easy to open latch. Now, one thing with this particular door that Airstream recommends, that is before you close your main door, open this and latch it back. Um, it, it's better on both, both doors for this to be attached before you shut it. Now, I'm gonna shut this door. You're not gonna get the experience of what it feels like to shut this door. They call it the vault door of the RV industry. You have to get onto, a, onto an Airstream lot come here to Airstream in Greensboro. I'll let you shut a door, but it is worth it. But I'll let you hear what it sounds like. There is no other door that gives you the sound of quality as the Airstream door. So I'm gonna open this up and move in inside the Airstream Flying Cloud. And you may have already noticed the surprise as I move in. Yep, this is the desk version of the Airstream. I'm gonna show you all about that here in a second. Before I get to that, let me just give you a little bit of a full view of this beautiful flying cloud, 27 foot queen, front bed queen. Now, as far as this setup here, that is a, a dinette. The dinette table does go down to make into a bed there. You can sleep roughly one to two, depending on the size, as far as adults or kids. You do have the storage up above. Now, one thing Airstream did change for the 23 model year and you're gonna see first right here, there's no longer the DVD player sitting here. They opted to go with the HDMI port right there. You do have an inverted plug, a 110 plug there, and then USB power right there. Uh, there is a um, grommet there to let cables go through if you have anything stored back there. Um, and then you have your radio here. It is the J JL Audio radios right there. Uh, fantastic radio, uh, Bluetooth, FM, AM, AM, USB. There's an aux input there. Uh, the JL Audio is a high quality speaker or radio system. You also have JL Audio speakers. These speakers actually sound good, which if you've been around the RV industry for long or if you've had a different type of RV, you will know right off the bat that RV speakers usually sound terrible. I actually had a, um, a manufacturer tell me that they spend somewhere around six cents per speaker or maybe 11 cents per speaker but very minimal money uh for speakers now the flying cloud one thing now as far as the the cabinets go as you move up the levels from flying cloud to uh, to the international to the globetrotter and so forth your cabinets change your table your surface uh materials for your tabletops change especially here in the kitchen um your your furniture covers change your floor changes but a big thing that's going to change is going to be the cabinets now the flying cloud for 23 does get soft clothes and one thing i've noticed about this particular color it's white it's it's very pretty it's attractive it does mark easy uh, and that's probably just from a technician coming in to do the the original uh, delivery inspection that we do when they come in just to make sure everything's right and then on the flying clouds you're not going to have the lights on the inside you would see that on a, on a globe trotter you do still have the over engineered hinges that uh, airstream is known for I love their hinges. It's a testament to the quality of an Airstream. And this is all solid. No matter where you look, it is solid. And then underneath, you're going to have uh, your lights, your reading lights there, speakers. There is a center light. Now, one thing also with the Airstream Flying Cloud, with your lights like these here, which we, we would call your uh, situational lighting there. And there's one also right there at the kitchen. On the flying cloud, the switch is, is here, as opposed to being somewhere else in the camper, like down there. You'll see that change as you go up into the different levels of the, the Airstream towables. And then you have a reading light on the other side. Now the cushions with the flying cloud, one of the things I do like about the flying cloud um, versus the Globetrotter, so the International is similar to this. Instead of there being a built-in part here, which the Globetrotter has, you have this additional cushion there is a connection there to help keep this in place and it's all velcro together uh, this actually to me on the flying cloud is a more comfortable uh, dinette seat compared to the globetrotter that's just something you're going to have to get in and sit down and try them out but for me that does seem com more comfortable and let me jump i'm going to set the camera down so you can see me sit down and kind of get an idea of what that area looks like now coming in to sit down as i mentioned um, 
this dinette and you can see there's actually um, more support here i think now with the glove trotter if you have one of the pillows that comes with the airstream you can set that behind you it works you can make it work but there's plenty of room here even for a larger guy like myself to fit that is also something that i think when you look at that airstream especially if you're comparing an airstream to another travel trailer product you see an airstream no sliders and so forth and you think that is way too small i recommend and, and just you know to come to an airstream store come here to airstream in greensboro and let me show you get in sit down and actually experience what it feels like uh, to be in an airstream and sit at the dinette now this folds down there's two latches there the connection points this leg folds up and then it, then it swings out and sits down i do recommend moving these cushions with the office here you can set the cushions around the office the office uh, desk here set this down and then put the cushions back there this is wide enough that the cushions themselves get in the way when you're trying to put this down you do have power below on both sides here which is really nice uh, and you have usb charging on that side there uh, reading lights here there's a little trigger you can turn that on and off there the speakers are right above here but fantastic for listening when you're doing a little bit of work uh, you can sit here the nice thing about the desk and i think why the desk is a popular option it gives you a place to set up a laptop um, that doesn't have to move just so you can sit down and have uh, some lunch or some dinner the cushions do come with it with this particular color options these are the cushions you get uh, a couple of features that i like one there is a grommet to go through here it has a little power opening there you can pass through cables there is additional charging there uh, underneath now it does come with a chair i'll show a photo of what that chair looks like uh, we didn't get it out we don't get this out until uh until it goes to the buyer uh, that mainly just because it, it would be a lot more here and there's a box there but i'm going to pull this out just so we can look underneath uh, you do have a leg support there there's a few things behind this as far as uh, equipment that airstream needed to put back there there is also a pull strap this is this is kind of reminds me of the uh the straps that you see when you're when you're going th into it like you're in a line and they're trying to route traffic like an airport or something like that that's what this reminds me of but it lets you put the the chair in that place and then pull this around latch it in place and keep the chair from from rocking out while you're going down the road now this is a stand sit desk which is one of the i think features of this desk and the stand feature is electric and this is uh, real time so you're going to see how long it takes for it to come up in real time so i suspect if you're uh not myself not but on the healthier type and uh you know health and standing as opposed to sitting is important to you um you may not even want the chair you may just want to have the ability to stand here and work as opposed to having the chair and sit or have both so this let me see is that yep this is as high as it will go which is good for for me at 511 this may be short for someone taller than me but for 511 this works perfect now this doesn't have the memory options um yeah you know, like some of your standing tables you can have you know memory one two three and it will you know move to that height when you hit that button it's just up and down it is electric that is that is nice uh really high quality <laughs> aluminum metal yeah that's metal wow that is uh that is high quality uh lift system right there there's additional power there but with this this tv um, you can have this swing out and make it into uh, a second monitor the other thing that's really useful about this is with the 23 2023 model year they upgraded these tvs to 12 volt tvs now as far as picture quality i have not really noticed a difference in the picture quality of the 12 volt tv versus the 110 tv or your kind of traditional tv that seems to be the same quality as far as i can tell you can see the 12 volt power dc power coming through here what makes this tv better than the 110 is the 12 volt is actually pulling directly off your batteries when you're when you have the older you know 22 or older camper and it's the 110 you know the 110 uh ac power tv uh, when you're boondocking and you're having to run this tv off of your batteries it is it has to go through a converter first or uh, uh, inverter excuse me so it's taking the dc power converting that or inverting that power to ac and then sending that power over to the tv 
that uh, device that does that, the inverter, is losing energy in that conversion process. With a 12 volt TV, you're getting one to one power. So as you're pulling DC power, you're getting one to one. There's no loss there. That's what makes this better. If you're going to do dry camping, this is definitely the option that you want to have. Or if you're on a trip and you, you just stop for a bit and you want to be able to come inside, sit down, make a sandwich, eat, and have the TV on, you're able to do that with this TV. What that does mean is your inverted power plug, which is right there. So the plug that would traditionally be right here, it's got a cover on it and below is your plug moved down. That is an inverted circuit. So that plug is getting power from your inverter. So in a situation where you don't have shore power, we currently are hooked up to shore power, uh, but you're, you're running off your battery. You're able to run this, this desk up and down, but also you're able to power um, your laptop computer or whatever it might be that you want to have plugged in here uh, off of your inverted circuit. That's a fantastic option or upgrade and that that does mean uh, in a dry camp scenario um, all of your inverted plugs that you have you're getting a hundred percent of that thousand watt inverter you're not sharing any of that with the tv when you have the tv on and then beside your hole that goes down you have a pull-up power plug there this is plugged into that inverted circuit that's below you have two 110 outlets and then two USB-A charging ports. As far as your in, your windows on the inside, you have these covers. There's two, two options for latching this. You can actually do a little trick like that and have it stop about halfway and it latches to your two pulls that open the window. And then there is a little latch connection point below uh, for, that t for the window. And then you can run the window all the way up. You do have the ported windows above, which are fantastic, adds a ton of light. There is a um, skylight above me as well as a fantastic fan that's above me. Now, as far as opening um, this window, there are two latches here. Again, Airstream likes the positive latch. Now, I'm going to try to open this window. There's a 50-50 chance that it will open or it is securely sealed to the side of the camper because this is a brand new camper. The window has not been opened a lot. So I'm going to try and see what happens. Hey, it opens. So you have your first point there the lowest or the closest closed um, or the least open the window will be there's three levels so your next level is going to be right there and then your last one is going to be all the way to the top and that's pretty far out you have the windows open just a little bit both of those windows and turn the uh, fantastic fan on you can get a really good breeze coming through the camper now looking at the kitchen, you're going to have your soft closed cabinets above large, very large cabinets as well. Soft closed over, you know, the over engineered hinges there and then your soft closed. Fantastic. As I mentioned, this exhaust fan does exhaust to the outside. Just make sure you open that on the other side. Uh, you do have your sea level tank monitor system here, which also gives you the status of your batteries when they, uh, when you have batteries. Um, we don't put the batteries on in 2023 one of the things that airstream changed and partly so because they would ship batteries amg batteries uh, agm batteries um, with the camper and then a lot of customers would actually upgrade those to lithium and at the dealership level they just had all of these batteries that were technically used batteries uh, that they had to do something with so Airstream decided with the 2023 model year to not ship them with batteries anymore. Now with this kitchen, you're going to have the residential style faucet. You do have a really nice plastic, could be cutting board, basically cutting board material. And then your surface mounted uh, stainless steel sink. There is some storage below here. And again, you have the strong hinges. Your question we always get where is the trash can that is stored right here you do have a fairly large trash can probably the most expensive rubber made trash can you'll ever buy it's right there and then along this side you're going to have your overhead lights which are dimmable your exterior light step light that i was talking about and then there is a push button battery disconnect uh, moving back here, you've got a, a 110 outlet that is not inverted, but it is protected. You have your solar charge controller. This is a Vectron Energy MPPT. And then you have a prog progressive dynamic uh, inverter. It's a 1,000 watt inverter. You're on and off switch and different controls 
for that inverter are, is right here. So if you want to use the inverter, you'll turn that on there and then your inverted circuits will be active at that point. And you do have uh, full extension storage here. It does come with the famous, I say famous, the famous Airstream wood uh, silverware storage. It's nicer than what, what I have at home. And then, as I mentioned, full extension drawers, there's four here. And then with this model, as I mentioned, it has the optional convection microwave. So it's a regular microwave, but it is, it's a convection my oven as well. Uh, convection is, well, they use that um, in restaurants. It's a restaurant style oven. Um, so it will, you know, bake, boil, whatever it might be that you want to roast, whatever it is. Uh, it even has an air fry function as well, uh, which is fantastic to have an air, air fryer that size. So this, the new one has an air fry as well. Uh, so you can roast, you know, something, you can bake a cake, you can make cupcakes, whatever it might be. My wife loves to make cupcakes. She could do that in here. Now it's, it's a smaller microwave, so she'll have to make some changes to make that work. And it's a convection, so she'll have to kind of do a little bit of test and trial. There's plenty of recipes, especially if you jump on the forums of how to use this. But the benefit to having this here, which you lose the RV oven, the traditional oven, but you gain these two shelves, or this shelf here, I should say. That's just a um, uh, um, a brace to, to keep things from falling out. But you gain this shelf. With the standard model where you have the oven there and the microwave is here, there's actually a separation about right here. And at the top part, there's a microwave in here that's stowed in this drawer. And it would pull out separate and then your pantry is just these two these two uh, shelves here so you gain this whole shelf of pantry, pantry space and then you do have additional storage that goes all the way back to the to the side wall the inner side wall there now so now i want to show you uh, the 12 volt 110 refrigerator now the fantastic thing about this fridge uh, is it is by norcole uh, the propane refrigerator if you've ever seen one of those or, or know anything about it, there was a condenser thing that would take up the whole top part of the refrigerator. Uh, and it, because it had to have both the propane uh, system and a 110 system, it was also the same depth, but more but shallow as far as your actual usable storage on the inside. The 12 volt electric fridge gives you a lot more storage and it cools off faster. The, refri the freezer will actually freeze your air your ice cream as opposed to uh, your propane refrigerators always struggle with that. This one also cools off quicker when you turn it on. And since it's 12 volt, you can actually leave this running as you're going down the road and that is perfectly safe and perfectly legal. And you do have some storage there. And there is a bit of storage underneath here. And then under the convection microwave. Now these are shallow simply because with airstream it sits lower so it has a lower center of gravity but your wheels and tires are on the outside of that and they use that space for uh for some uh, equipment to run through with the 27 foot you're also going to have a double wardrobe which is right here your storage above you do have a switch light there you've got your bar that goes across that is the device for running the manual stabilizers down and there's a box of goodies there that plastic is just the plastic that the uh, comforter and pillows came in and then you have one furnace outlet there you've got your propane alarm system right there your power which is going to be both your 110 breakers and your 12 volt fuses are stored there now with the 27 foot and the 25 foot, you're going to have this curtain that you can pull across here, which will turn the bathroom area into an ensuite. And then you also have a curtain on the other side there. If you're getting ready and you want to have ultimate privacy and be able to turn this into a closed bathroom, you can pull both curtains. As far as the shower goes, now five, I'm 5'11", as I mentioned. I do fit in the shower and I have a good few inches above me. Uh, once you get over, you know, five eleven, you get into the six foot. It does get a little bit tighter, but I've had a number of men who are six foot plus uh, buy these and not have a problem at all with them. Now you do have the shower head that you can move around, which is fantastic. 
You do have the seat in here as well. You can sit down and uh, take a shower. This is going to be very user-friendly uh, user if you're a larger person uh, to wash off. And you do have a pull string that comes across. Now, this is not super strong. It's going to be good for um, things like uh, bathing suits, those types of things, not necessarily a heavy towel. And then you do have a vent that um, exhausts to the outside, and it does have a fan in it. It's a max air, max air vent. And moving into the bathroom, turn all the lights on. So now in the bathroom, you do have a porcelain toilet. I recommend if you're looking at an Airstream to sit down on that toilet, close the door, get a feel for what it feels like to be on the throne. And then storage underneath right there. There's sliding door storage here and here. Your toilet paper holder, if you're wondering, is right there. You have the Formica countertop, same as what's in the kitchen there. And you can see the aluminum. You do have a protected outlet there. This is going to be your hot water, your tankless hot water heater control. This is what you're going to want to set to, to 118 to start with. And then you can move it up and down from there. Set that, turn just the hot water on, stick your hand in there, and you know, make sure that the temperature wise that that's good. And then you can jump in the shower. You don't need to use the the mixing valve with the tankless hot water heater and then you do have hello the mirror there and a medicine cabinet behind and that does stay up on its own and there's a little bit of additional storage right there and moving into the bedroom as i mentioned this is the queen bed you can do a twin bed in here. The twin bed is going to give you additional storage on the outside. The storage underneath the beds, don't. there's not really a huge increase there, but there is additional storage on the outside by doing the twin bed. Uh, larger storage on, on the front, a little bit smaller on the back. Now, as far as the this bed goes, uh, I'm going to put the size of this bed up on the screen. Uh, of course, you can look, as I mentioned, on the brochures for Airstream and get the ex exact sizes of all the beds, whether it's twin bed or the queen bed, you do have a good amount of space as far as being able to move around the bed here. There's some storage below this nightstand and the nightstand on the other side. You also have USB charging and a 110 outlet right there. If you have any equipment that you need at night, that is fantastic for that. You can see the pillows that come with the Airstream, a flying cloud, and then you have the storage above right there and it goes back fairly deep there again no lights in the flying cloud you would see that as you move up into uh other other models of the airstream and then you do have the soft close here as well there we go got to get it far enough and then i'll move around to the other side of the bed now as i've mentioned and you've seen me i'm not a small person i'm a fairly good sized man i fit in here fine I move around fine i will say in my opinion show you the, the storage underneath right there and then you've got your 110 usb on that side but in my opinion uh the twin bed does give you more space in the room especially if you've got you know more than two people you know if you've got one or two people in there I, I feel like there is a little bit more space in the middle that's probably what makes the uh the twin bed a popular uh, option now it does have the wraparound window on the both the front and the back as you saw on the outside both the, the that window and the window behind me do open as well as that middle window right there and then you have your dual zone control for your ac right there and you do have a heat pump and then two acs above your 12 volt tv there and another inverter circuit right there and then you can see again your dc power plug that moves into the wall there to get to uh, the DC power and then you have an overhead switch here that is dimmable there's just a sliding sliding latch there or sliding whatever that's called variable resistor <laughs> and then your furnace outlets right there now the Airstream does have a fully enclosed underbelly it is aluminum cover uh, that underbelly is heated um, so if you are camping in a colder climate in the winter and freezing cold weather weather as long as you have your furnace on uh, you're going to get the, the underbelly is going to be heated as well as all of your tanks. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, this is a dual AC system. 
that is the intake there for the AC system. That is the vents that, that blow out the air. You're going to have two intakes right there is the second one. And then both of those are ducted into the overhead system. Now, one thing about this AC system, it's actually, it's actually ductwork. It's not you cut out foam. There's actual ductwork up there. So it's a more efficient AC system. And it, they call it the quiet stream because it has an actual intake. It's not just the bottom of the AC system hanging out, which you would see in the Bambi and the base cam. But your, your Caravel is up. You're going to see this system. As you go to the Globetrotter, there's a little bit different intake on the vent system. It has a filter there. Um, it's going to be much quieter. You can still hear it, but it's significantly quieter. I think they say 30% quieter than your traditional AC system. And it's also going to be more efficient because it actually has ductwork there. And then you do have a fantastic fan over the bathroom area as well as the vent. And a fantastic fan over the shower area. And then you also have a fantastic fan here up front to blow air out. And with that said, you can get, if you have all the windows open, you can get a good four to five mile per hour uh, breeze through the RV with that fantastic fan on and these windows open as well as the windows there in the back. First of all, thank you for watching this review and walk around of the Flying Cloud. Uh, fantastic floor plan. You have the desk here, which is a, a rare option. So glad I was able to make a video of this so you could see it. If you have any questions on this Airstream, uh, the, the Flying Cloud, or any other Airstream products, including the Touring Coach, feel free to reach out. My contact information is below this video. Uh, again, my name is Chad Watson here at Airstream of Greensboro. I'd be happy to help you find your next Airstream and make that purchase happen. Hope you're having a great day and remember to live riveted.